actually one thing I was going to bring up um, on the technology front as well is this whole big data regime as well and learning mm -hmm. analytics as an area. Mm -hmm. I know we don't we haven't experienced it a huge amount, but it's something which is on the horizon. Whether any of you have any thoughts about that, which might be both frightening a la Edward Snowden, or it might be uh, useful in terms of predictive stuff or watching people who are not keeping up, or, you know, there are a thousand ways in which it could also be helpful. I don't know whether you've had any, I mean, this is something which hasn't quite happened yet, but looks like it's happening now. Yeah, like an algorithm to tell us when a student is about to start to not do well in class. And I think there are people who have worked on such things in um, group projects, especially for the military, um, and they seem to be able to predict when things will go wrong. It, it would be nice to have tools like that. It, it's possibly also a little bit scary, right, to start doing that. But on the other hand, I have a graduate student who wanted to, to use some of the, uh, the archived material from Classes in Diversity and Equity to look at what happened when there was disagreement and found that it, it wasn't searchable in that way. And so we have the data, but we don't have a way to get it. And I, I think that's one of the things I'm concerned about is we're, we're maybe at the equivalent of you know, those um, albums of Polaroids where by the time you figure out how to search them, they've already turned pink. I mean, we've got to figure out, I think, a way uh, to use the information that we have in, in ways that would be useful and creative. You know. I'll just mention one aspect of this because it's been on my mind a lot just in recent weeks. I don't have yet on my courses a uh, sort of uh, buyer's beware warning to students that tells them that even the applications that we have, not even big data, but you know, Moodle or Blackboard, how much data is actually collected about them. Mm -hmm. and my students don't know that I can tell right. whether they've downloaded the readings or not. They don't know that I can tell exactly how many times they've logged in and how many times they've posted. Um, and I'm starting to feel like I have an ethical obligation to let them know up front that these, that these, uh, that these, the, the software is collecting all sorts of information, let alone the sort of uh, macro level big data that you know, MOOCs and other things are talking about. Um, I don't know what students do with that information, but I'm starting to realize that they don't know this. And I think I do have an obligation to let them know that I can see things, I can observe things about them and their study habits and interaction habits that they don't realize that I have access to now. Uh, and so that, again, that's a challenge for me as an instructor and I've been feeling it as, a, as an ethical concern, whether it's my job to disclose that to them in advance. Um, it's not a secret, I mean, if they browse the app for a while, they can figure that out for themselves. But at the administration level, at the moderator level, you do see some things that the average student doesn't have a participant doesn't have access to, and which we didn't see in the past in face-to-face -face classes. Right, you know, exactly you, you right. Know, there's a lot of although when they sign out resources from the library, you, you, could. you could always know. Right. 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 So. Right. 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 It's just it's just more accessible now. Yeah. It's more right. visible, yeah. and and actually also the fact that all sessions are recorded, people can come back and look yeah. at them again. There's a lot of um, a lot of you know I call it incidental recording that's going on, which is not integral to the system, but in fact there is a record of everything. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll go on. You, you might want to get you're probably going to get this issue of controversial topics, but I was reading recently about a professor who was troubled with this from a different standpoint. Uh, actually, one of our colleagues that in her classes students are dealing with extremely provocative and controversial material that they might not want to have right. their comments recorded mm -hmm. and preserved. Um, now you can switch it off, you can do certain kinds of things, but there's another aspect of this sort of uh, what, this, what, the, what the system is doing in the background, um, that in the case of dealing with really controversial materials, where students who live in parts of the world where maybe it's not so okay to crit criticize the government or whatever, they might feel quite free doing it in the class, but they might not feel so free doing it if they were realizing that it was all being recorded. So there's, th there's that dimension as well, which is more sort of political and not just the ethical aspect.